G'day guys, it's Chris from Low Carb Life here again today and what we are making are going to be sausages today. So I'm going to try three different versions. Got a heap of chilies we've just harvested to it, jalapenos, um, uh, red habaneros and also some mustard or yellowy habaneros. So we're going to get them in, plenty of garlic, bit of onion and put a bit of garlic mushroom in some of them as well. So we'll try three different types. Looking forward to it, let's get into it. Guys, before you start going and twisting up your sausages, go and hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more of these awesome videos. Awesome recipe ideas for you guys to try out at home. First thing I've got here, I've got about one and a half kilos of meat and we're gonna put some salt through it. I'm gonna do it at about 2%, so we've got about 30 grams here and just sprinkle that across and we're going to start working this in. This mince is three star mince, so it's not your best quality mince. It's uh, got a fair bit more fat through it, but for sausages, we want around about that 30% you know, fat in there, just so it doesn't clog up the machine, so they're not dry, and so they're really quite tasty, full, full of that nice um, oil that's going to keep a lot of the flavors in there. All right, no one likes dry sausages. So I'm just going to set that aside while I get the other ingredients ready. Just wanted the salt in there so it can start doing a little bit of uh, you know, flavour penetration in there. I'm going to add some garlic and other spices in there shortly, um, but I just want to get this down to room temperature, so breaking it up, making sure that it's going to come down to the right temperature so it's easy to pump through the old sausage maker here. So I'm going to start by chopping up the mushrooms and getting them browned off <clears throat> with a bit of the garlic and the onion uh, so we can chop them up after and put them through the sausages. So this doesn't have a mincer attachment. I don't actually own a mincer, so we're gonna chop them up as finely as you can, but you know, you, do, you want a nice chunky sort of mushroom texture to a beef and mushroom sausage, so that's what we're gonna do. This looks like a lot of mushrooms, and it is, but it's gonna bulk out the sausages a bit more, because I've only got a kilo and a half of mince, so I want about a uh, half kilo for each different type of sausage that we're making today. So I'm gonna get these in the pan, wilted down, sort of, you know, where they're starting to get a bit crispy with a bit of oil and a little bit of salt, and chop them up. So I'm just gonna crush about a ha good handful of, of peeled garlic um, here to whack in with our mushrooms. These are gonna be quite garlicky sausages, but who doesn't love garlic? I don't know. You'd be mad not to. So we've got our mushrooms under here. I've put about half a cup of water into the pan, frying pan with them with the oil, just so they steam themselves. They'll start wilting a lot easier. And I've put a little bit of beef stock in there as well. So I'm gonna put this garlic in as well. You can put the garlic in first, but I wanted the pan nice and hot, and if I had put the garlic in, it would burn. So we're gonna open this up carefully. Chuck your garlic in, give it a bit of a stir, just a brief little stir around. Give it a, I just generally shake the pan a fair bit, but get that in there. That is gonna be garlic mushrooms. We'll take the lid off once we get closer to the end, once more of that water has evaporated and the mushrooms have shrunken right down. And then we will chop them up, ready for our sausages. Alright guys, so these are some of the habaneros that I've been growing. Um, and this is just off one of the bushes. Um, it's the mustard habanero, and then we've got our red habaneros. These ones have come out quite small, actually, so it's been really hot here, massively hot, like I'm having to water them every day. The leaves are wilting over every day. So I've actually moved them under a shade cloth, so that they're gonna stay a bit, yeah, a bit bigger, less stressed, um, and they should be pretty good. So the next round of fruits that come off, or chilies that come off the bush, should be a lot better. But look, I'm not, not complaining too much. These are still really tasty. They're just small and a bit more fiddly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to halve them. So you guys can see these. I'm just gonna take the top off there. All right, and then I'm gonna cut it in half. And for the most part, I'm gonna pull these seeds out because that is where a lot of the heat is. And for these sausages, I more so want the flavor with a bit of heat. So I'll be leaving the seeds from a few in there, but I don't have a mincer. So I don't want people getting whole seeds, it'll wreck the uh, sausage experience, I think. So I'll pull most of the seeds out and then we'll mix that into part of our mince over here. Alrighty. Righto, so with these red ones, guys, I was hit pretty hard with some fruit flies. Um, so what you wanna do is make sure when you cut the, the habanero, if you've been growing them yourself, have a look inside. You'll see on this one, there is a bit of brown stuff um, in there. So. This is another sort of reason why I want to scrape the seeds out. Sometimes the, the actual flesh of the chili is fine, like the fruit, but sometimes the, um, the little larvae of the uh, fruit flies will be in there, but you can just scrape them out 
um, but you know, ideally you want the ones that, that don't have that. So just check them all. I've thrown a couple away that were a bit too far gone, but I've put some uh, fruit fly traps up out there now and I've, I've moved them into the, into the shade. So hopefully we won't be having any fruit flies smashing them again and we should be pretty right. So now we're just gonna chop these guys up nice and finely, not really caring too much about the, the uh, sizes. We're just gonna just, you know, think of the size of a bite of chili that you'd like. Now I tend to eat these whole, just pull them off the bush, but we want it nicely mixed in with the beef mints. So I'm just gonna chop it as I see fit. That smells freaking good. They're fruity. Fruitiness of these habaneros is, makes it probably one of my favorite chilies of all time. It's got a good amount of heat, but that fruity flavor, it's, it's very unique and it's very, very good. Goes with a lot of things. Seafood, beef, pork, pretty much anything meaty, it's great. Um, makes a fantastic sauce, which you guys can check out. My passion fruit habanero sauce. Click on that link up here and you'll see that one. Also did a mango habanero version. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. That's gonna go in the bowl once, we'll put the meat on top of it, uh, once we divvy all that up. So we're, I've turned the mushrooms off. We're gonna get those now. I'm gonna give them a nice chop. I'm just gonna get some of the jalapenos, we're gonna chop them up, de-seed them, and then we're gonna get that all into another bowl. Then we're gonna separate our mints out into habanero, mushroom, and jalapeno uh, flavors. So I will be back, I'm gonna grab some of these jalapenos. A nice big bag of them that I picked the other day. Grab a few handfuls of those guys out. So some of them are ripe, some of them aren't ripe. That should be enough of them, I think, for these. These ones are a little bit too small to make poppers out of. Look, nothing's ever too small to make poppers, but it was gonna be a bit fiddly, so I thought, why not just um, put them into some sausages? So that's what we're gonna do, guys. So same process as before, basically. We're just going to take the top off, right, cut them in half, and then just scrape those seeds out. Not that there's heaps of them. These red ones tend to be a bit sweeter. These are obviously jalapenos, they're gonna be pretty mild. Um, some of these, actually, because it's been so hot, um, they did get quite stressed out there while they were growing, so it's a good thing, because it's made these um, got, have a bit more heat to them, which I absolutely love. And one thing I also really love, look at that um, corking on there, that looks really cool, hey, awesome. So we're just gonna keep peeling these out, and anyway, I'll get this pile done, and I'll see you guys back when I'm chopping them up. Um, and then get ready to put them into our mix. Where? Well, yeah. Nice little bit of a tickle from that jalapeno there. So not super hot, but they're just, it's a nice little level of heat where it's like, hey, g'day, how are you? I'm here, you know, and it's really quite nice. Beautiful stuff. All right, so about halfway through these guys. Looking forward to tossing these up. Some of them have also had a bit of an issue with whatever the hell's been in there. Something's obviously had a good go at it. I probably won't use those because <clears throat> you know you don't want anyone finding a worm in the middle of their sausage you know I think that's probably the point of sausages sometimes there's far more sinister stuff that goes into sausage meat than you'd probably care to know <clears throat> but with these I have just got your you know general three star mint so it is all meat um, at least there's no you know offal and that sort of stuff not that that's necessarily a bad thing offal can be pretty good um, with you know, all the vitamins and minerals that are in different organs, but usually they'll have a bit of a stronger taste, and if you're not into that, then you're not into it. And yeah, here we go. So in this one, you can actually see the little worm. There he is, cheeky little bugger. And he's come through the top of that near the green stem bit, little bugger. So that's just a waste. Pretty frustrating when you see that, but I've got methods in place now to make sure that we have less troubles with the little buggers. So I'm not wasting pods. I literally wasted about half of the habaneros because they got attacked by these fruit flies. All right, so these are done. <clears throat> Let's chop them all up and get them in their own little bowl for the sausage casing pressing. Now guys, if you do have a food processor, you can totally use that. You don't want them too finely chopped. You want them nice and rustic. 
Um, but at the same time, the food process is going to make this quite a bit easier. I've got that blender over there, but it's uh, it would turn these to liquid pretty quickly. So I'll just manually chop them, nice and rustic looking. Look at this, Christmas time, Christmas bloody themed sausages with the old red and green. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, beautiful. That is nice and roughly chopped. These guys are going into the bowl. And then I will get our mushrooms uh, chopped up. I'm just going to give this chopping board a quick rinse so the chilli doesn't get into our mild sausages. So our mushrooms are here, plenty of them. So we've got a roughly the same size pile of extra ingredient for each um, thing. So we've got about the same amount of habaneros and the same amount of jalapenos. So just going to roughly chop these up in there. Guys, everyone, when, everyone loves sausages that when you, you know, bite into it or chop it open, you can see what, you know, is advertised on the outside. You know when you, when you crack open sausages and you're like, you know, they're meant to be flavoured with, you know, mushroom and truffle or whatever. If you, if you can't see mushroom or truffle in there, it's just disappointing. So, these will be sure to make anyone who loves their sausages happy because they're going to be able to see all the ingredients in their sausage. Again, doesn't have to be too crazy. I want this nice and rustic. All right, so I'm just gonna spread that out so it can cool off a little bit. I don't wanna put the hot mushroom in with the um, beef because we don't wanna cook it. All right, so let's just let that cool down. I'll put that aside. And then I'm gonna divvy up the um, beef into there and we're gonna just start mixing them. So for this, we're gonna need our scale. So I'm just going to zero our scale. I'm gonna pop on top the habanero one first. So we wanna zero it and then I'm gonna put about 500 grams worth of beef into there. So, just grabbing that, that, that looks like it should be almost right. So 595, we'll take a bit off, not too much, 570, that's all right. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's get to mixing these guys. So, plenty, we just wanna make sure the ingredients are fully mixed together as much as we can. Now this is really gonna be for the chili lovers, it's gonna be a high ratio of chili in there to the, to the beef, so. Plenty of beef, but it's going to be a hell of a lot of chilli in there with it, so not for the faint-hearted. It's not going to be that hot because there's not that many seeds in there, but look, she's going to be good. So I'm going to say that's pretty done. I might add a little bit of oil to that in a minute once I've done the, mixed up the others initially. Then I'll, I'll take the gloves off, get the oil in there, and then we'll reconvene mixing. Something to be said for making your own sausages, it's kind of like making your own cheese or you're brewing your own beer. When, you, when you're eating it or drinking it, it is very satisfying at the end, knowing that you know, you've, you've put in all the work and the, you know, it's, it's paid off and you're really enjoying it. I made sauerkraut before, you know, a bit of kombucha, a bit of uh, kefir, you can do just about anything, you know, and it's great. So guys, they look pretty chunky and I'm bloody excited for it. That's, that's, that's really how I want them. This is the joy of it, making it yourself, you can do what you want with it. So this is the last one. I'm gonna put the mushroom straight onto this. Now to this one, I am actually gonna add a bit of truffle oil. Might get a little bit of spice transfer from the other mix over here with the jalapenos and the habaneros, but look, who minds about that? So for this one, the old truffle oil, you can see the little truffles down the bottom there. Pretty, pretty cool. Let's get some of this in. This will just add an extra layer of flavor to, for the depth of that uh, mushroominess we're gonna get there. I'm also gonna add a bit of coriander powder in here as well, because that is goes quite nicely. That. So we'll just mix that up a bit more. Beautiful stuff. This is nice and moist. Now try and keep it all in the bowl if you can. Nice and moist. These are not gonna be too dry, that is for sure. They really uh, have come to a nice texture. I'm really excited about that one. Nice and chunky. It's gonna be a winner, guys, I can tell you. I'm pretty excited. Don't be scared of the fat, guys. It's what keeps these nice and moist. We've got a bit of fat inside the mince there, but we just want a little bit extra. You, you'll know once the meat comes down to room temperature, if it's not uh, nice and sort of you know, soft, you'll, you'll get a feeling for it. If it's, if it's too dry, you'll know, and it's just time to put a little bit of oil in just to help you know, it stay moist. No one likes a dry sausage. I was only gonna put a little bit of smoked paprika into uh, these chili ones, just cause that smoky flavor goes really quite well with it. So let's get a bit of this in. Fair bit there, same in the other. Plenty of. 
Alrighty, so I've got this uh, casing from a local butcher, so I am just going to pop him into the thing. What I'll do, I'm just going to open it all up. Um, and just get it in there, just make sure every bit gets covered. Right, just a bit of warm water, that's all you really need. These are the artificial ones, so they do they do have real casings that you can use, which are just you know intestines, generally from pigs. Um, but they didn't have any of those real ones around, so I've just got what I can get currently. I'm just going to pull them, soak these guys in there. But you can see there's quite quite a lot of casing there, so it's going to make quite a few sausages for us. Let that soak in. It won't need long um, to actually. Yeah, rehydrate. It's already pretty perfect. We've got our mushroom mix in here. We've got our casing. Let's uh, just pop this on here. Slide them on. And I've just given it a bit of grease on here, but just slide them right up. And um, once we've got this all on, then we're good to go for our actual sausage filling. So there's not too much of a trick to it. Just make sure it's wet enough and just start sliding it up and on there. This will take a fair bit more of this, but I'm just gonna stop it there. I'm gonna chop him. Squeeze all the air out. Let's get this uh, sausage mix coming through here first. So you can see it's starting to come through to here. We're nearly at the end. All right, guys, I'm gonna tie it off there now. So I'll just pull a little bit of that off. Tie them off. Just curl them around the loop and I will we'll roll them a bit later. All right, so out she comes. Nice and easy. Just feed a bit of this down so it's easy to come off. Um, but you just wanna regulate the pressure so it doesn't pop all off at once, right? So that's how we want. Look at that. So you can see there's a bit of pressure build up in there. The sausage will expand. And this is about the size that I did, that I was after. So I'm pretty happy with that. Just start curling that around a bit. So if the pressure gets too high, you will bust. So I've busted that a few times. Now, I don't mean to say I'm professional at making sausages, I'm just having a crack. But, it's not that hard, you can do it. If I can do it, you guys can do it. 100%. So, as far as I can feel, I think I'm at the end of the pressure down here. So what we'll do, yeah, so we've got a bit of a suction thing there. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna refill our thing with one of the next mixtures, um, and then you know, this stuff that's in here, that'll make another sausage and I'll seal that off. Um, so we're good to go. So this time we're going to use the habanero mix. Okay, we're back in business. Let's pull the casing over the edge again. Tie that knot once again. Pull the casing back over and we're going to get the last, that was our mushroom, back out here. So we can tell where the habanero one sort of starts because it is starting to change colour. By the looks of things, we're at the end of our casing anyway, so we might as well just cut it there. And that's just one random sausage, so we'll just tie them off, get some more casing on there, and away we go again. Okay, get the air out, tie it off. And we're good to start again, this time with our jalapeno mix. Let's go for gold. Alright guys, so there's a fair bit of mixture left in here. Yeah, enough for sort of two burger patties or something, so that's pretty much exactly what I'd suggest you do with it. Let's get the rest of this on here. So this is the jalapeno one. We're just going to do this, start the twisting process. So <clears throat> I'm going to make them a bit smaller because they're going to be pretty intense. So three one way. If I'm going that way, it means this is twisting that way. So you just want to <clears throat> alternate them and don't drop them off the bench. So it's that way. This one is going this way, so we're going that one. Because you don't want to undo it when you're doing the next one. Turns out I might have made these a bit tight, and when you twist them, they want to crack. So, if there's a bit of air in them, you can prick them. Tiny bit. <coughs> so once they dry, with that twist, you should be able to chop them with no worries at all. Okay. So I'm just going to keep twisting the same way. For a first attempt at making sausages, I don't think these are bad. These are pretty awesome. Um, one thing I do reckon is that 
with the pressure in the sausage, so once you're winding that out, you don't want the skin really tight because when you go to twist them, it's putting too much pressure in there and they're starting to pop. Um, so that's one of the critical things. The other thing I would think to recommend to you guys, make sure that when you put it in here, that you don't have any air bubbles or to make sure you squeeze the air out as much as you can first. Um, other than that, really, these are going to taste great. I'm excited to eat them. Um, most of them look like actual sausages. Um, we're just going to let them sit set for about you know four hours or so in the fridge before we actually cook them. So we'll do a taste test of them all. Um, I'm pretty excited for them. And guys, let's see how they taste. Now we're here with Miko, who has just had one of the delicious sausages. Look at the intensity of that sausage. Delicious. Miko, what do you reckon about the sausage? It's a really delicious sausage. <laughs> he really likes it. Look at that enthusiasm. Very strong. Very strong. Now, we have Jess over here, behind us. Jess, what do you think about the sausage? <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely. Delish. She is frothing at the bit. Cannot wait to explain more <laughs> about how great the sausage was. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Jess. <laughs>